I'm Keith Jewell, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know for the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Invincible Iron Man issue number 14. Tony Stark must take stock of how his life has been affected by the second superhero civil war. All this and more, let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so as the comic opens up, we get brought up to speed on everything that's been happening in Civil War 2. And I mean, seriously, if you're reading Iron Man, do you not know what's happening in Civil War 2? Everything has more or less gone to shit for poor old. Old Iron Man. His friend is Rhodey is dead. His company is in the gutter. All the other heroes are fighting each other for one reason or another, and there's not a damn thing he can do about it. Worst of all, he really, really wants a drink right now. Which, of course, would be a really, really bad idea. Granted, like most recovering alcoholics, Tony can always hit up an AA meeting, only that's just the thing he can't. He fears going to the regular superhero community meeting because he doesn't want to run into Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, there, the one he's fighting with. For those who don't remember, Captain Marvel is also a recovering alcoholic and just so happened to be sponsored by Tony in the first place. In disguise, Tony decides to hit up another smaller meeting wherein he listens to all of the people's problems. And oh hey, wouldn't you know it, all these random people's problems just so happen to mirror Tony's own problems and their talking about taking things one day at a time kind of relates to him too. You can imagine his shock and surprise though when one Carol D ends up taking the podium and tries to talk. Yeah, she went to the same meeting as him. Tony rushes out of there fearing that this has to be some sort of ambush set up by Captain Marvel and her side. Only, it's totally not. Carol took the more public meeting for the same reason Tony did, not wanting to run into him at the superhero community one. As both heroes bask in the irony, they figure this might be their only opportunity to talk to each other before the Civil War starts to get really bad, so they do just that. It's a really great conversation, too. They talk about how they both met each other, where they stand now. Tony is especially plucks the heartstring, saying that, you know, because of you, my best friend got killed and you killed my other friend, so I can't even talk about my grief. Marvel, of course, fires back by saying that she's hurting too, that she never intended for any of this bad stuff to happen, and that maybe the reason she keeps up with it the way she is is that it's the only way to justify all the people who have been hurt so far. Another great thing they bring up is that they say that both sides have been pulling punches right now out of respect for one another, hoping that they could find another way. This is really, really good stuff. Why is none of this in the main book? The two eventually decide that they are one unstoppable force meeting another immovable object, and whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And then something crazy happens. The comic skips ahead to the end of Civil War II. We see Tony Stark's biological mother, the one that he found in the pages of Bendis' other Iron Man book, International Iron Man, come to Stark Industries, only to be met by Friday the AI, who tells her that her son is gone. And that, believe it or not, is where the comic ends. Invincible Iron Man number 14 was actually really, really good. It has in it everything that Civil War 2 was actually lacking and that is people actually sitting down and talking through their issues like adults. I mean, they don't get anywhere because the big fight that's gonna happen needs to happen. But they really do plunge the depths of these characters in some meaningful ways. In many ways, too, this issue is kind of a send-off swan song for Tony Stark. This will be his last issue until Riri Williams takes over and Doctor Doom takes over in the two new Iron Man books that are coming. Overall, yeah, I liked this one a whole lot. There are a few things going on in this Civil War 2 that I would actually call required reading, but this issue right here, definitely a piece of required reading. I would give it an 8 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.